So this is my clear assault and it's meant to show uh, a lot of things about how the assault and especially how the double lever catch works uh, that you can't see on the less clear version. Uh, starting from the front, uh, the way the whole the spring in the front is an extension spring rather than the usual compression spring and it's just quieter, more efficient, it's nicer in a variety of ways. But uh, in order to move that, uh, there's an outer piece here. In this case, it's just a clear polyester, but uh, in the uh, mass-produced uh, assaults, that's actually a T handle. Anyways, uh, that is uh, attached to a tube on the inside here, which in this case is also clear. Uh, and I highlighted it with purple so you can see what's going on there. But that is what pushes on the catch and uh, moves the plunger system back and forth while it's priming it. So moving over to the catch area. So this is the basic movement that we get here. Uh, the, this is what stops the uh, plunger. Let's just put it there and see. So that's that's how it works, but I want to point out that uh, when I prime this, this piece is pushing this way on this pink bit, which means that even if you get rid of the catch spring, uh, so like I'm as you can see, I'm just pushing it aside, uh, the plunger system is actually putting a restoring torque on uh, this pink guy. So it's actually trying to push the pink, the pink piece further into the catch position rather than out of the catch position like the trigger will do. Uh, one important addition uh, or change to the double lever catch that Ryan came up with, super camera dude, uh, is that uh, the original ones in the bull pack, uh, it was just a point that would go up and down. And it wasn't very strong, but it seemed like it was necessary to keep the catch from sliding out. Uh, if you can look closely Wait, at the that? catch piece, um, I don't think it's in that hard. <laughs> okay. Well, the part place where the catch is resting on the catch piece is actually sloped so that at first glance you would think that uh, the it's actually going to push the catch out of the way. Uh, that's but. The uh, amount of slope is carefully chosen uh, so that the, in order for uh, the uh, catch to be pushed down and out of the way, uh, the uh, plunger system actually has to be pushed backwards. So anyways, that's two completely redundant explanations of how the catch works. It's cool. <laughs> it does look really cool. Anyways, back here. This is where all the air action happens, and this plunger goes back here. Now this plunger ring, this O-ring, if you look carefully, it's not sitting in the same place on this uh, plunger head, and that's because the friction is meant to draw the O-ring forward in the plunger as you're priming it, and that actually causes it to not seal for a while. Uh, Owing to the position of uh, a hole, if you like, uh, head. if you prime it back and forth, yeah. you can like see the uh, yeah, yeah, see that actual ring floating around. Bas so basically, when the O ring's in the back position, it seals. It's in the front position, it doesn't seal. When it's flying forward, it gets in the back position really well, seals really nicely, and so that's what allows you to fire. But this allows the blaster to inhale from the back, so it's not sucking the dart. Uh, in through the Y, which can cause problems. Anyways, uh, the uh, really I guess the next uh, piece of the hopper, which uh, as many of you are aware, is a magical PZC fitting that takes certain types of homemade darts in here, and when given a puff of air, it blasts it through uh, the barrel this way. Cool. I'm sure, you can't see that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you couldn't. Anyways. Uh, that's all I wanted to show you. So.